We're at field day and we're joined by Fortet. It's an absolute uh, pleasure to meet you, Kira. Thanks for joining us today. And we wanted to have a chat about the fabric CD, which you've just mixed. Did you have quite a clear idea in your head of how the mix would sound, or is it something that has just unraveled as it's progressed? Uh, I think I had a few ideas about stuff I wanted to do. I wanted to do, uh, I wanted to do something that focused a bit on some of the old like garage music and stuff from the late 90s and things. And that was definitely an early idea of mine. But then I met up with the people from Fabric, and they kept talking to me about the concept of the club and how it's like, Fabric's all about that specific location. Like they would never open another fabric somewhere else or do like a fabric night at another club or something. It's very much about that one place. And I thought, what if I make the CD really about that one place, you know, like, and uh, I moved me away from the idea of a kind of traditional DJ mix and made me think more about doing something that was more like kind of story almost about that spot and that location in London specifically. And I had like a sound engineer go down and make recordings of sounds in the street outside the club and inside the club and stuff and mix all those actual sounds of the place in with the music and try to do something that had more of a narrative to it and wasn't wasn't just about one of my like typical DJ sets or something. So it was a case of effectively trying to capture some of the some of the atmosphere that you get on a fabric night out as opposed to just doing a mix CD. Kind of like I hope that not necessarily explicitly do that but maybe evoke the kind of like experiences I have in specifically in London as well like the sound of London and the type of music you hear and the history of music in London and I put it together more like you put together like a film soundtrack or something I think when I was kind of thinking about it that type of pacing and stuff rather than just being a kind of linear DJ set thing. And there are some tracks on there which seem incredibly obscure did you have trouble tracking down some of the the tracks for the mix? Uh, I guess people might think most of the music I check out is obscure, you know, like, but that's my job, you know, is like looking for interesting stuff. And uh, and if you're doing a mix CD, the chance to like put things on there that are a bit off people's radars rather than just like banging out stuff people have heard a million times, you know, it's, it's a nice chance to put things forward for people to like hear maybe old music they've never even heard of before and discover new things and stuff. I kind of use the mix CDs to do that a bit as well. So. Yeah, I wanted, especially with the old garage stuff, I wanted to choose things that I thought were like really like amazing tunes that maybe had kind of been lost a little bit or people in like there's this track on there by saying Crazy Bald Heads and I think if that came out like this week, people would lose their minds, you know, it sounds so fresh and so new, but it's like 13 years old, you know, and it's, uh, they made 500 copies at the time and just got kind of lost, you know, so it's nice to be able to pull things out like that and give them like a new lease of life maybe. And you mentioned you want to try and capture some of the um, some of the historic aspect of London-based music. You know, how do you feel that the electronic music scene in London has changed since you first started making music uh, here? Well, I was like I was like a teenager when like jungle and drum and bass and stuff happened, and I've just kind of been watching since then, watching that kind of evolve into like two-step and garage and everything, and then into like grime and dubstep and like whatever's going on now. And, it's, for me, it's just this constantly happening kind of thing that's like bubbling around in London, you know, pirate radio and clubs and new producers are coming up and stuff. And that, that music's just like in my life and in my blood and in my like, it's always there, you know, and it's definitely been an influence kind of whether I like it or not even. So um, it's something that you feel's always kind of washed into yeah, your music. Yeah, always there. I think there's a lot going on now that maybe people don't even know some of the stuff from the 90s and things or how much some of the stuff around now sounds so similar and so yeah when I was making the mix I definitely wanted to make it my little kind of love letter to London a little bit in some ways. Because as well you've just moved out to New York uh -huh. why did you decide to move out there? Uh, I'm just temp living temporarily in New York for a little bit as uh, for like family reasons and stuff and uh, have a change of scene and things and um, but weirdly, living somewhere else makes me kind of appreciate London even more in some ways, like in terms of the music and culture and stuff going on here. I feel like being away from it, I'm watching it even more closely. Like, like when you live in London, other places like Berlin seems really intriguing. You're like, wow, I wonder what it's like in Panorama Bar tonight. Like, I wonder what's happening there. And now I'm away in New York and I'm like, whoa, I wonder what the hell's happening at like 
plastic people tonight or whatever it is. And, you know, you, <clears throat> so I'm probably looking at London in a slightly different way being away. But. You put out a single on your label Tex Records uh, with both Burial, who you've worked with before, but also Tom York. How did you find working with that collaboration? It was cool, you know, was like, I've worked on a few collaborations over the years with different people and things, and uh, this one just came together in a nice kind of natural way. We were all, something all of us wanted to do, and um, yeah, it was good. It was kind of, I think we, we didn't get together and be like, oh, let's put out like a record and like make it, we were like, let's get together and make some music and see what happens didn't put like pressure on to get a kind of release like and then when we had something that was ready that was worth releasing we put it out but it was quite yeah you know, it was quite a mellow kind of like thing doing it you know I think it came out I and mean, obviously having that combination of people was a big deal but, um, <laughs> you can't think about that when you're making it right? if you worry about stuff like that when you're making music it's, you're gonna make something shit I think so Make, makes it more difficult to express how you want that to sound. Yeah, you just got to like keep cool while you're doing it and make music for the right reasons. You know? Now, there are a couple of cheeky new releases on your Fabric Mix that's coming out on Tex Records. Um, and the record that you did last year, There Is Loving You, is a lot different to the stuff that you've done more recently, which seems a lot more jump up club based than maybe There Is Loving You was a lot more chilled out. Do you find that your music taste will generally change based on your surroundings or is it just almost a natural progression of your music, the different stuff that you've been doing? Uh, my stuff's always changing. If I did anything and it was like the same as before, I like chuck it in a bin and start something new really. You know, it's like, it's important to me that the stuff's always moving on, like changing in different styles, different areas, and it's like a constant kind of journey, you know? And so we've got these releases coming up on text. What other projects are you working on? Uh, nothing so like the stuff on text is just tracks from the fabric mix that I'm putting out doing the vinyl and uh, I don't have a new album or anything so I probably I think around now I'm going to hopefully get some time to start working on some new stuff and I don't even want to know what it's going to be like I want to surprise myself you know I don't have a clue what I'm going to do next year and that's the best way for me you know? I just feel like things are very open right now and I've been actually like trying to calm things down so they can be quite open I can go off anyway I feel like. Yeah because looking at your back catalogue it's generally been quite sporadic your releases and do you find that you take time to kind of find a bit of inspiration and then you'll suddenly start working something spontaneously or uh, will you just jump into something and all? I doesn't mean too sporadic I think there's I put out a lot of stuff now and I think it's slowing down a bit now sometimes because when you put out a lot of records you know there's like five four ten albums I did like all the stuff with Steve Reed and all the remixes and things like for me to bother putting out more stuff, there's got to be some purpose. I don't want to just like clog up the world like, more and more with anything unnecessary. You know? I kind of want to like take my time and make sure I do stuff that's worthy and some kind of point to it, you know? So, um, but I'll just put stuff out. You know, if, I'm, if I've got a lot of good stuff going on, then I'll put it out. If I don't have much going on, then I'll hold back, you know, I think. So would you say there's an almost an element of pressure in the music that you want to put out? You want it to be different from stuff that you've done before? Yeah, but only that's just pressure I put on myself, you know, like to like to like be moving on always, you know, like changing things up. I think it's just that's just like my my thing really. Well, Kieran, we're always incredibly excited to hear new music from you, and it's been a real pleasure chatting to you this afternoon. Thanks for joining us.